Hi. Hi, hi. So I was going to talk about something else today to do with relationships, but all the messages and signs I got this morning told me that there are people out there that really need to hear this message that I'm about to share with you. So I am a life coach, as you know, I'm an intuitive life coach, and often in this space of personal development, life coaching, etc., we we go with the positive. So when it comes to relationships, we you know stick to the top three things you can do to find your new partner, or the top three things you can do to recover from your breakup, and that's all great. Love that, but especially when it comes to relationships, which are you know in the human experience those that part of our life that really touches our heart often the most so that is an area that we are the most tender so I had the sort of the sign or the intuitive hit this morning to talk about relationships and loss in a more real and you know a more real way. So rather than, as we're told so often in this world, to just move on, carry on, feel better, be positive, how about if we allowed ourselves to feel how we feel? So when a relationship is lost for all kinds of different reasons, and all kinds of different relationships. It doesn't have to be your romantic relationship. It could be a friend or a family member. And when that relationship is lost, again, lots of different ways that we can lose relationships. We are allowed, you are allowed, to feel however you feel about that. To really be in those feelings and express those feelings in whichever way you want to that doesn't hurt anybody else. So I have found, as I said, we're often encouraged to just skip ahead, move on, get over it, especially when it comes to breakups, especially when it comes, you know, you'll find there's different types of relationship loss that in society we allow people to respond to in different ways you know what I mean like if it's a breakup we're like okay come on move on get over it if someone's partner dies however they're allowed to grieve for as long as they like you know I'm not saying either one is better or worse than the other but I'm saying look at how we in society say that we should be doing things and let's just throw that all away and do and be however it is that we want to be. So I have, you know, some people close to me that are going through some difficult things right now. As, you know, most of us do, I'm sure, have people in our lives that are going through difficult things or are going through difficult difficult things ourselves in relationships or definitely have been through difficult things. And I just really want to say to you and to them that however you're feeling is absolutely okay and it's really not just okay but it's actually part of the process to allow yourself to drop into those feelings and allow yourself to move through those feelings you know we feelings we call emotions emotion that is the feeling moves through us the motion of the feeling moves through our body And when we don't allow ourselves to feel, when we push it away, when we stuff it down, when we numb out, those feelings get stuck, get stuck in our body, get stuck in our nervous system, get stuck in our experience. And that's, they start to block us in different ways, whether that's just physically, you know, I'm sure you've had experiences where you've had physical aches and pains or other illnesses that you could maybe trace back to some kind of experience, trauma or emotion that wasn't properly processed at the time. 
So to really go into it, and I wanted to um, actually share a quote that I shared with one of my friends this week. And it was from, I'm going to find it on my phone, it's from Glennon Doyle, she used to be called Melton, but now it's Glen, Glennon Doyle Wombat, Wombat, I don't know how to say it. Um, so she wrote the book Love Warrior, and she's just incredible. I really recommend you look her up. So in one of her talks, I mean a long time ago, she said... Pain is not a hot potato. Pain is a traveling professor. And it just goes and knocks on everyone's door. And the smartest people I know are the people that say, come in and don't leave until you've taught me what I need to know. I just think that is so powerful. Do you know what? I'm just going to say it again because I think it's so powerful. Pain is not a hot potato. Pain is a traveling professor and it just goes and knocks on everyone's door and the smartest people I know are the people that say, come in and don't leave until you've taught me what I need to know. I mean, oh, it is just, yes, she's onto something and she's been through it in her life, in her experience. She really has been through it. So with that in mind, think about how in your life, maybe you have done or maybe are doing now, where are you shutting off those feelings? And let's talk specifically about relationships. It might even be a relationship from a really long time ago that you feel like you just are not really allowed to, you know, feel that loss or feel that grief for whatever reason. And can you soften with yourself and give yourself the gift of allowing yourself to really be in that experience that is your experience? No one is able or allowed to tell you what your experience of loss in a relationship should be. So when it comes to having these feelings about loss in relationship, you know, some people say, that's all well and good, but you can't just be in grief forever. And that is very, very true. So what I say to my clients when we're talking about this is, no, maybe to start with, you really might live there. You might live in grief. That might be where you're living. And that's okay. But as time goes on, we don't want to live there. But we can definitely go there. We can go visit. We can go stay there for a while and we can knit back. When we have some time to ourselves, we can go there and then we can come back. So when it comes to these difficult feelings, this loss, grief, sadness, we don't want to live there for long, long periods of time. But we can definitely go there when we need to in order to process and move through. I have had a number of losses in my life, as I'm sure you have too. And I found, especially to start with and, and throughout the whole process, it was excruciatingly painful, really. And different losses, different, you know, have di different experiences for us. What allowed me to create some softness around it, some, what, smoothed off the really rough spiky edges was really allowing myself to feel and go into and experience and spend time with and on those feelings and that loss and doing things around it. I am really one for doing things around a loss. So whether that's whatever that might be to you, whether for um, creating a small altar space for that person or that being that you love so deeply to have a little space that you can go to and to be with them and to write them notes and to journal and to put little gifts that you find for that soul, that spirit 
So you created this little love space for you both. That's one of the things I did when I experienced a loss in terms of a death. And I still can't really talk about it without crying. Um, but I, I'm not gonna cry now because we don't need that right now. Um, it really, really helped me go through that process. So different for all of us. And I just really wanted to say, it's so easy, like in this life, we're so busy. We're like trying to achieve stuff all the time. Achieve, achieve, achieve. How much more can we do? How much more can we do? And we don't have time or space to really go through the full range of human emotions to really process these things that happen to us. Not just the good stuff, not just achieving the dreams, finding the thing, getting the car, whatever, but actually the deep, dark, often difficult feelings like pain, those, as Glennon says, those parts and times of our lives are not to be glossed over. They're not to be the Instagram photos that we never post because we're showing our highlight reel. I'm not saying put it on Instagram, but you know what I mean. They're not, it's not to be put into the background and forgotten. It's not nothing to be ashamed about just because you're not, you know, sparky, sparky, being your best self, <laughs> you know, it's not about that, it is about being true and authentic to yourself, giving yourself space, time to heal, the opportunity to really heal, and find support and help, have support and help, loved ones, professionals, healers, body workers, whatever it might be, psychologists, coaches, whatever works for you, you find the support system that you need. It's your responsibility to do that, to find what you need so that you can heal and bring those fractured parts of yourself back together. So I hope I've kind of covered everything. I really wanted to do this as I said, I got so many nudges to talk on this subject, which isn't really an easy subject to talk about, and it also isn't, you know, the most fun subject to hear about, but it is so important, and I just want to give you permission to give yourself whatever you need in terms of how you're feeling, any sadness, any grief around any struggle in relationships, and to let you know that you're not alone and that it will be okay. You will be okay. And even if you have these, you know, feelings, you miss that person or you miss that spirit, even if you miss that spirit every day for the rest of your life, you can still have a beautiful, beautiful life. And I am sending you so much love. 